Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Igor and I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. On the request of one of my subscribers, I will analyze the topic of quercetin. Quercetin is a flavonoid. Flavonoids are such active substances contained in plant products and having their effect on our body when they are consumed. They have a large number of properties. They have an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory effect. They protect our organs from all kinds of toxic effects. From the effect of electromagnetic field, it protects the liver, kidneys in case of various metabolic changes, for example in diabetes mellitus. They protect the cardiovascular system, can fight atherosclerosis, high blood fats, have antiviral and antibacterial effect, blood thinning effect, and so on. Quercetin is a well-studied natural remedy. It is a yellow crystalline substance that is insoluble in cold water, slightly soluble in hot water, and well soluble in fat and alcohol. When I was preparing this article, I found more than 1,400 articles on this subject in the World Foreign Medical Library PubMed and of course had to analyze quite a lot of materials and today I would like to tell you about this remedy. Let's get started. In nature, quercetin is found in a fairly large number of different vegetable products such as red onion, garlic, apples, plums, red grapes, such as fruits, blueberries, blackberries, capers, olive oil, parsley, sage green tea, black tea and so on. Quercetin is a powerful antioxidant. Let's consider one of the articles of uh, 2019. This is a literature review which combines a large number of other articles. In particular it says about the antioxidant activity of quercetin. Here's an interesting diagram. On the left uh, there are different types of um, let's say damaging factors, including electromagnetic waves, which uh, permeate everything nowadays due to the use of various electronics, household appliances, Wi-Fi, mobile phones. Besides, there are stress, effect of various toxic substances that enter our body from the environment. In addition, it is a cigarette smoking, alcohol, the use of different chemicals, ultraviolet light, all these factors cause oxidative stress, in other words, they cause a damage to the body with the formation of free radicals. The body has its own neutralizing antioxidant system, but if this stress is constant and chronic, or if uh, free radicals are regularly formed, uh, or a huge number of them were formed at once, then the system can be depleted and body organs can be damaged. As a result, diseases such as diabetes mellitus, atherosclerosis with the formation of plaques in the vessels, neurodegenerative diseases such as uh, uh, neuropathies, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease may occur. There may also be acute injuries. If the effect of these factors on the body is massive, then it causes a serious damage to the organ, inflammation, which may lead to its complete death and subsequent death of the entire organism. Quercetin is a powerful antioxidant and it is able to replenish the body's antioxidant reserves. Accordingly, it is a kind of a trump card in neutralizing any toxic and other harmful environmental influences. Accordingly, it restores, for example, glutathione, thereby bringing the body into balance between antioxidants and free radicals. Here is a number of studies on the effects of all kinds of toxic substances on human organs. There is a lot of information here on the effects of a variety of toxins, including alcohol, on the liver. Quercetin protected organs against the free radicals and ultimately the progression into liver cancer. Next, doxorubicin, a red chemistry known to everyone, which is very often prescribed to patients, but which is toxic to the heart. At the same time, quercetin is able to reduce the toxicity and DNA damage caused by taking this chemotherapy drug. In addition, quercetin reduced damage to spinal cord and nerves from certain damaging factors. 
The final part of the article gives the details on the newest forms of quercetin aimed at improving its bioavailability, which are similar to those I described in the second video on turmeric. There was a table there with comparative characteristics of different forms like liposomal forms, nanoparticles, phytosomes, etc. developed for better absorption and delivery to organs. This is very important because all these plant substances have a, have a rather weak bioavailability. Similarly, new forms are being developed in respect of selenomycin, this anti-tumor antibiotic. The problem of nowadays is a, I would say, pandemic of insulin resistance, diabetes mellitus and obesity, which is associated with a low-grade constant chronic inflammation, fatty liver disease, and respectively hypertension, atherosclerosis, which are very common now. All these uh, problems bear great risks to the life and health of people, in which we can quercetin help in this case. First, it is known that it lowers blood pressure and helps to fight insulin resistance. Besides, according to some studies, it had a positive effect on the intestinal microbiome, on bacteria uh, living in our gut, and uh, suppressed chronic inflammation in the intestine. That means that it would be nice to use it for uh, dysbiosis uh, of uh, the intestine, for histamine intolerance syndrome, which I was talking about in uh, their uh, separate video, a syndrome that is manifested by a huge number of non-specific symptoms, ranging from headache, runny nose, frequent sinusitis, asthma, intestinal problems, to problems related to cardiovascular system like low blood pressure, arrhythmias, etc. This syndrome may give allergic-like symptoms, but that is not a true allergy. What are the results of clinical trials? In other words, what are the results of tests on patients? This is the most interesting information for us. It often happens that excellent results of preclinical studies, when quercetin is added directly to cells, in the right doses is not confirmed by the results of clinical tests on humans. What is known about the effect of quercetin on immunity? In one study with regular intake of quercetin, people had fewer sick days due to uh, upper respiratory infections, and another study showed better stamina in athletes in course of training, because it is known that training is also a stress for the body, causing inflammation and the formation of free radicals. Many studies suggest that it is able to reduce one of the cytokines, which is called tumor necrosis factor alpha. At the same time, the effect of quercetin extended only to those people in whom this factor was elevated, which naturally meant persistent inflammation and the risk of cardiovascular diseases. As to the effect on the cardiovascular system, quercetin is able to regulate vascular tone, the volume of fluid in the body, functioning of the autonomic nervous system, the kidney hormonal status, which regulates blood pressure. Thus, quercetin normalizes high blood pressure. For those with low blood pressure, quercetin has no effect. It doesn't lower pressure more. Let's take a look into another systematic review of 2016 with meta-analysis. It combines the details of seven clinical trials on real patients who were given quercetin and their blood pressure levels were monitored. Quercetin reduced the level of blood pressure in these patients significantly when daily intake dosage exceeded 500 mg. Conclusion, quercetin can be used as a safe remedy for those patients who suffer from hypertension and to protect against atherosclerosis and to control pressure. With regards to cancer, it is known that food rich in bioflavonoids, which is a plant food, all kinds of fruits and vegetables reduces the risk of cancer, especially in intestinal cancer, by 20%. Quercetin is an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory agent that can help to prevent cancer. And it can also cause apoptosis, which is like cancer cell suicide. It blocks genes that cause tumor cells to multiply. Thus, it is also an anti-tumor agent at the stage of treatment, not only prevention. For example, there was a literature review published in 2018, which was covering preclinical trials of quercetin for various types of cancer, for example, breast cancer. 
It enhances apoptosis, blocks the genes of reproduction in cancer of the intestine, large intestine and pancreas, liver, lung, prostate, breast cancer, bladder, stomach, bone cancer, in leukemias, lymphomas, brain, head, neck, cervix, skin, eye, thyroid, ovarian, kidney cancers and mesothelioma. Thus, in my opinion, the authors of a number of preclinical studies make the correct conclusion that quercetin can help in combination with standard treatment of tumor diseases, not instead, but together with. And again, there are not enough clinical trials on real patients. So never do self-treatment, always speak to your doctor. On allergies, there is another modern article of 2020 on how quercetin can be used for allergic diseases. Basically, it includes data on treatment of asthma, allergic rhinitis, that is a runny nose, and atopic dermatitis, that is allergic skin changes, inflammation. All trials here are preclinical. We see how many positive effects quercetin has in asthma. For example, it reduces the production of cytokines that cause bronchial spasm, respectively, shortness of breath, reduces the production of viscous mucus that prevents people from breathing. Quercetin also prevents the bronchi from reacting so strongly to factors that cause asthma attack. In case of allergic rhinitis and atopic dermatitis, symptoms also improved. And the authors conclude that quercetin, given its cheapness and safety for health, can be used as a supplement in treatment of diseases associated with allergies. But again, the number of studies on patients is clearly not sufficient to be sure that human tests will show the same results. In treatment of allergies, we can also use bromelain, which sometimes goes with quercetin and serves to enhance the anti-allergic effect of quercetin. There are also many preclinical studies on quercetin and osteoporosis, which prove that quercetin is simply a very effective remedy for treatment of this disease. However, there is only one clinical trial done on patients. It was very a high-level trial, a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled, and conducted on patients with type 2 diabetes. In the course of this study, patients were given 500 mg of quercetin per day for 3 months, and that's what was observed. The patients had elevated serum levels of osteocalcin, as well as of vitamin D and calcium. Gynecological problems treatment of polycystic ovary syndrome. In 2020, a review was published which combined studies, most of which suggest that quercetin has a positive effect on ovaries themselves, on the number and size of cysts on hormonal levels, plus it has a positive effect on the level of testosterone, luteinizing hormone and insulin resistance. And quercetin improved cholesterol and other blood fats. A study was also conducted on the effect of quercetin on memory, given that it is a neuroprotector and can protect neural tissue and nourish it. This study was conducted on people with Alzheimer's disease. At the same time, this study is not representative and it's impossible to draw any conclusions based on it. If we take studies on humans, there are only two available studies, and only one of them, where patients had an early stage of Alzheimer's disease, showed an improvement in memory. Dear friends, it is worth noting the following. First, quercetin exists in different forms. It can be a pure form without attached glucose, or it can be with glucose attached. In other words, glycoside forms. It is contained in different forms in various products. In onions, for example, it is glycoside form. By the way, keeping, for example, for a minute in the microwave increases the level of glycoside forms of quercetin one and a half times. What is worth mentioning in general about the properties of quercetin? It has poor bioavailability. It means that it is almost insoluble in water and uh, is highly fat soluble. Therefore, there is a study on the ways of improving its bioavailability, similar to what I explained with regard to turmeric or salinomycin. In order to improve its absorption properties, all sorts of new forms are being created like nanoparticles, phytosomes, liposomes and so on. But if you regularly take it in good concentrations, then after a while its concentration in blood grows and begins to be maintained at a fairly good level. 
Quercetin, given its uh, good fat solubility, is better to be taken with fatty foods, so it will be better absorbed. It is not destroyed uh, by hydrochloric acid of the stomach and is depending on the attached glucol mo glucose molecule. It will also be absorbed differently. For example, it is known that those forms that are found in onions are absorbed much better than those, for example, in tea. Forms combined with glucose are absorbed better than pure quercetin. Quercetin is safe. That is, side effects uh, have almost never been observed, except for slight discomfort in the stomach if taken on an empty stomach. So, as was said above, it is better to take it with fatty foods and average doses should range from 500 to 1000, 1 to 4 times a day. Let's draw conclusions. Quercetin is one of the most studied and powerful natural antioxidants. It can be used during the acute phase of some infectious diseases, including, for example, coronavirus infection during post-COVID, which is a syndrome when the mast cells are activated and there is some kind of permanent inflammation and uh, overactive state of uh, immune cells. It can be used during histamine intolerance, some acute poisoning, intoxication, allergies, with metabolic syndrome, obesity, insulin resistance, diabetes, in case of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, atherosclerosis, fatty liver disease, theoretically osteoporosis and polycystic ovary syndrome. However, quercetin is still a dietary supplement, not a officially registered drug due to the lack of clinical trials on humans. More studies needed to understand what doses are needed for different diseases and included into official recommendations. If any of you have taken quercetin and can share their experience, please write it down in the comments below. God bless you and bye.